Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Today, I am joined by the beautiful Heidi Shepard. Heidi, how are you doing today? I am fantastic. Thank you so much. I am in beautiful Las Vegas, so I cannot complain. The weather is perfect. Um, I'm getting ready to go record an album, so I'm packing stuff up. I'm in a room here with all of our musical gear, and we're just getting ready to hit the dusty road. We're recording in Michigan, so we're going to go to the tundra and <laughs> do an album. So I'm good. I'm feeling creative and excited. Well, the coolest part of all that is that's where I'm at right now, in the middle of the snowstorm here in the beautiful D in Michigan. Um, so I hope you have an amazing time while you're here. Thank you. Uh, and you, you just talked about how you're going to be recording an album. Now, the thing about that is Heidi is a musician, actress, and former morning show and radio host. Now with her amazing metal band, Butcher Babies, which has been storming the world and spreading the good word of metal for 10 years now. So Heidi, what got you into metal? Oh, man. Um, I think in my... My early teens, I was just a regular old rebellious teenager and mm -hmm. uh, metal spoke to me. I wasn't, I, I grew up in Provo, Utah, I wasn't allowed to listen to rock or metal, just kind of whatever my parents let, listened to or whatever was on the top 40 radio. And so um, once I found metal, I, I remember I was at a skate park and the kids were listening to it while skating and it was in the new metal days. And I just remember some of it frightened me and I'm so consumed with, um, I love the, uh, the feeling of fear. Um, of course, when I know like it's a haunted house, I can get out safe. Not if someone's breaking into my house then I'll, you know, grab, grab my gun. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it's a, it, it was just something that really spoke to me as a kid. And I remember seeing a Slipknot shirt and I was like, what is this? I need to know what this is because it, it frightened me at first. So, mm -hmm. Um, that's really what turned me on to metal, and it's just been a part of me ever since. I um, I was a radio DJ on an alternative rock station, and so it's just always kind of been a part of my life. And so when I had the opportunity to start Butcher Babies, I grasped it onto it, and um, here we are thir almost 13 years later. That's wow. so awesome. And <laughs> as we all know with Slipknot, you can't see California without Marlon Brando's eyes. Yeah. Um, and that totally, I loved Slipknot growing up, uh, still dig a lot of what they do. Um, and it's cool to hear these stories about how, because for me, it was punk rock, like growing up, like I remember, you know, skateboarding in our small town here and just, you know, there was like me and like four other punks around here. And, um, it's just funny how the stories are the same, you know, yeah. no matter yeah. how far apart we were, the stories of how we got into it. And cause my parents were the same way. It's not so much that they didn't want me to listen to it, but my mom listened to like Conway Twitty, Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley. My dad listened to like Queen, Zeppelin. So like that was where I started and that kind of morphed into like, I got the gateway drug of Green Day. You know, hearing Green yes. Day on the radio was my yeah. gateway drug into punk rock. And <laughs> yeah. it's just amazing how that morphed into metal, you know. Yeah. Even like you're talking about new metal. Growing up a little bit, um, I... I wasn't really into metal all that much because where I'm from, it was like kind of like the punks and the metalheads were kind of against each other in this weird way when we should have been uniting against a common enemy. But like, I could tell you, even as a young punk kid, even though I wouldn't have admitted it then, I knew the words to every single song on every single System of a Down record See, that there existed. You See? <laughs> you know, like, so. We all admit later on in life, we all were just kind of melding together. I, I had right. these friends who were in a, in a thrash metal band and my mom's a politician and she was up a, for um, a, a role in politics in Utah against the bass player of this band's mo mother. So it we were being rebels and hanging out as friends. And it was just like, you know, the, the metal scene for me made me really feel like family. And I was also, you know, a cheerleader and I ran track and field in high school and college. Um, but the metal kids would come to the games and cheer me on <laughs> right, <laughs> as right. a cheerleader, you know? And so it was just like the metal community, they just really embraced me throughout everything. And that's really where I fit in. I was a cheerleader because I was a gymnast. And so that was easy for me to do and it was fun. And then it ended up going, I, I cheered for the NBA. Like I took it way far, but you know, the metal community always was 
just, they were always there for me. They were my friends. Um, you know, fast forward 8,000 years later, when I started butcher babies, um, it was a little bit of a different scenario, but, uh, it's, it's, it's my life and I love it. I'm surrounded by metal all day, every day. In fact, right now upstairs in, um, our studio, we're preparing, um, there's drums going on upstairs right now. I had to hide in here cause there's drums going on. There's all sorts of stuff going on upstairs right now. So my life is metal all day. <laughs> And that's awesome. I was waiting for you to be like, and then I started Butcher Babies and the cheerleaders came out to root for me in this. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but it, it's so amazing to see not just you following your dreams in metal, but especially, you know, TV and film. Um, you guys may have seen her in Slasher uh, season three on Netflix. My name is Earl, the Ghost Whisperer, 90210 and films like Animals, Couples Retreat. And something else that we have to talk about while we're here is Virginia bitches. So before we do that, though, I do want to remind everybody, not only do I have all of Heidi's social media links down here in the description for you to follow her and keep up on, I also have links for the band as well. So make sure you're checking them out. Whether you're a fan of awesome metal or you're just a fan of great music, make sure you're clicking these links down here. Follow her on social media so you can stay up to date with everything she's doing. And make sure you're checking the band out. Follow them down here yeah. as well. So. Now, we talked about the music a little bit. I do want to talk about Virginia Bitches because I'm so stoked because so many people that are so influential in my life, you know, growing up and even now are a part of this film. So obviously we can't talk too much about it because of NDAs and everything's still, you know, kind of getting the ball rolling. But is there any little bit you can tell us about the production of Virginia Bitches? Well, we haven't started production yet, so we are going to hopefully dive into that in the summer, and it's going to be um, it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited about working with some of my greatest friends and also some of my favorite actors. Um, this what when I was approached to be one of the leads of this movie, I immediately said yes. I'm like, oh, a vampire movie, easy. That's like right up my alley, you know. <laughs> Um, it's just spot on. So, um, and I'm excited. It's, you know, it's about an all female death metal band. It's not a far cry from my real life. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be really, it's going to be really cool. Um, we're still working out, you know, some of the details, but, um, it is a crowdfunded, uh, project. So the, the production company also made the movie Bad Candy, which starred Corey Taylor and a bunch of other amazing actors. And um, they wanted to kind of do something in the same universe. And so when it came to Virginia Bitches, it's just about funding, getting that done. We have, you know, people are on board, people are excited. So they are crowdfunding this and um, I'm excited to reach the goal and get out there and make some movie magic. I grew up in the movie industry, so for me, in the film industry, so for me, um, movie magic is my, that's, that's basically like home for me. So right. I'm very excited about it. So you said that it's crowdfunding. Is there a crowdfunding funding or Indiegogo page going on right now? Yeah, yeah, there is. There is. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. one. Um, there's an Indiegogo. Uh, you can find it, of course, on the Instagram page or um pretty much anywhere you Google Virginia bitches. Uh, it's really fun and I'm excited to do a movie with Elisa. Elisa and I have been friends for like a decade now. <laughs> so I'm super excited to you know spend some time, play some vampires and, and have um, a good time with my friends. So I, I'm, I'm really excited for it. So keep an eye out. I'm, I think it'll be the end of the year when it finally, finally leaks. Well, and the good thing is you only have to Google Virginia bitches because Links down here in the description for the Indiegogo as well. Woo! So if you'd like to contribute and be a part and help to make this film get made, all you got to do is click this link down here in the description. Help these guys to achieve a dream because, like I said, a lot of amazing people that I've grown up, you know, uh, members of the band Under Oath are a part of this. Yeah. You know, so many different people that have been so influential in my life. And it's something that I'm so excited about. My friend Stephanie Zarnicki has been one of my good friends since we were little kids. Actually turned me on to the fact this film was being made and... When I started reading it up on it, I was like, I got, I got to get some of them on here. I got to talk to them about this because it's super <laughs> well, exciting. For reaching out. I mean, it's, it's really fun. And, um, I feel like it's kind of monumental, you know, the, the producers, um, Dallas, Dallas Taylor, one of the writers and one of the producers, he's been uh, one of my good friends. He was a first singer of Under Oath or the old singer, mm -hmm. I guess you can say. Um, and, uh, 
of Maylene and the Sons of Disasters. He is awesome and he's an incredible okay. actor. So um, I'm so excited to be able to uh, start a film with him, uh, first and foremost. You know, and he went through some insane life Heavy. changes. Heavy uh, yeah. Almost lost his life in 2000, I believe, 16. So I think this is a huge blessing for me personally to be able to make some movie magic with a friend who has defied everything and come back and almost stronger. So, so well, Dallas here. is one of those guys that you hear his story and you just know the strength that not only that man has physically and mentally, but spiritually, the strength of that man is amazing you know like being having conversations with that guy makes you feel like you're a better person i love dallas to death he's such a sweetheart and such a kind soul and so intelligent so i definitely understand what you're saying there if you guys have never had a chance to check out even like the old under oath music like they were very spiritual very hard and very good they're still great i still love under oath to this day but yeah. you know like um the changing of the times like what an amazing album so um, we know what you got going on in the future, Heidi, and we know what you're doing right now, but now my love, I want to take it back to the past and I want right. to talk about what got you started in the horror genre, your first horror movie and Heidi, your first horror movie was Scream, the original, the original Scream, as far as I can remember. Yes. Right behind you. Uh, I, I, you know, that was a first movie, first rated R movie. I got to see, and it was my first horror film from what I can remember. It was so monumental to me because, as I said, like I wasn't able to listen to rock or metal, let alone watch rated R movies. I grew up a Mormon kid. You don't watch rated R movies, but my dad was like, you know what? We, we're going to go to the Blockbuster together, and we're going to rent Scream, and we're going to watch this together. I was in seventh grade, I believe. So I think... Um, I was either in sixth or seventh grade, one of the two. And so he was like, okay, she might be old enough to maybe take this in. And I probably was begging him because probably all my friends got to see it. Yeah. But I remember watching it with him and it opened up the door to more horror magic in my house. Um, pretty soon it became all my family would watch horror films together and um like I said I grew up in the in the film industry my dad is a gaffer he is a camera operator he owns his own production company in Utah and he has for 30 years so he's like we've been in it for a long time right and so when we would get scared as kids he'd be like watch let me push let me push mute here it's not that scary you know and so it kind of blended my love for music and horror because you really can't have one without the other and so I think that really started everything for me and probably dipped me into the metal world faster than uh you know faster because of that I think right. you know when I first heard the metal stuff I was probably in seventh or eighth grade so it was probably all kind of around the same time just a big snowball effect but um yeah scream got me you know, Matthew Lillard, I remember, I remember Matthew Lillard, and I was like, oh my gosh, he's so hot, you know, as a kid, and <laughs> so, you know, I started down, down the rabbit hole of horror films with my parents. Thank God you did. Yes! And what, what an amazing film to start with. I've told this story on here before. Um, when I was 14, uh, my dad told me he would take me to get a tattoo, and the tattoo that I chose was Ghostface. That's what I chose to do. And when I got oh, there, sick. the tattoo artist talked me out of it and instead talked me into getting the actual painting, the screen. Oh, that's and cool. And so, yeah. So that's, I got that. That's totally a scream inspired tattoo. And that was supposed to be Ghostface, but they talked me into that instead, which I don't regret. I still think it's dope as shit. But yeah. um, this it movie, is. this movie really changed horror. Like it, revitalized the horror genre back in 1996 when and whether you love scream or you hate scream look at the movies that came out the three years before scream and the horror movies that came out the three years after and you'll really see the huge effect the scream had in the horror world so really another movie that in, we can, it ahead. really brought in the whole slasher you know it brought back the 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 fear of the slasher i mean mm -hmm. we had psycho back in the day but it was i, I feel like it, it was almost a little bit more paranormal and then when when uh you know scream came around it was almost like it switched to this could really happen in real life these are psychopaths mm -hmm. you know uh this 
and then you had I Know What You Did last summer and just so many slasher films. And to this day, my favorite type of horror movie are, is gore. I love mm. crazy gore, blood, intense. Like that's because that was what I first fell in love with in horror. And yes. um, not because I'm a psychopath, I hope, but no, <laughs> I, I, just, I just think that um, when it's well done, it is absolutely fucking terrifying and it could happen mm -hmm. to anybody. And I think that that's why. And the thing that you just mentioned too is, and I'm being honest here, because you know I've been in the horror community my whole life. I, my parents owned a video store growing up. So yeah. like, <laughs> that's what I did was just watch videos all the time. And I feel like the, the horror community is not only the most genuine and the most welcoming community out there, but a lot of the people I meet are the most down to earth I hate to say normal because that's such a stupid fucking word, but you would never expect them to be, you know, watching gore porn at night, even though I hate that term. Um, like, it's just like, it's I've amazing. I've never heard that before. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that term before. You just yeah, introduced I, I'm, something new. <laughs> See, I'm not a fan of it. I, I really don't like the term, but like, my thing is like, I've met a lot of horror people that you know, they're, they're just the most loving and kind and sweet people. It's like, hey, we just want to hang out and talk about movies and watch you get your eyes ripped out. Like, that's all we want. We're not asking. Yeah, yeah. What's that, the big you know? What's the big deal? <laughs> <laughs> so with Scream, we talk about how influential this movie is, Heidi, and not just on you and me, but the whole world, honestly. But there's a lot of very effective scenes that can stick with you, especially a young lady in seventh, eighth grade you know discovering horror discovering metal discovering yourself you know puberty is happening you're becoming a woman all these different changes are happening in your life and now your social life is changing as well because you're running into this new group of horror and metal and it all started with scream so do you remember which scene it was from scream that affected you the most oh, you know i i don't i don't recall which scene affected me the most obviously i've seen the movie uh, you know a bunch of times since then but I would say probably the the iconic scene with Drew Barrymore um I mean th that's iconic you know, just th what's your favorite scary movie what's your favorite scary movie not taking it seriously and then pure mayhem um I think that that as a kid was terrifying because like I said it could be so real um mm -hmm. we had those portable phones in our houses I was the oldest of six kids and I, it was my job to always babysit so I'd be the teenager at home maybe by myself maybe taking care of kids you know so it's something that could be real could have could have really happened oh. obviously throughout the years there's been more screams there's a, a new one that came out I haven't seen it yet but it's on my list of things to do so good and i've heard it's amazing i watched the mtv series um mm -hmm. i'm a huge huge fan of the i guess you can say the movement of Scream. Mm -hmm. It inspired so many different things. And even the TV show that I was lucky enough to do a cameo in, um, uh, Slasher for Netflix. Um, yeah. I remember watching that before I was cast in it and watching the first couple seasons and being like, wow, this takes me back. Mm -hmm. takes me back to the Scream days and to the, the, the slasher film days. So um, I was so lucky to be a part of uh, that, that TV series. Yeah, and it's funny because now, you know, you, you're a part of that forever. No one can ever take that away from you. You are part of the slasher world now. And that's so fucking amazing. Like these things that like, I get to watch my friends living out their dreams, you know, like I get to talk to you guys and, you know, I get to live vicariously through you guys learning about stuff that you've gone through and the stuff that you're a part of. And I'm so happy to now be as well as you're forever in that slasher universe. You are also now forever in the sledgehammer horror universe. And that means yeah. so much to me. <laughs> to be able to have you guys here and um with scream like i said I, I when the movie first came out i had a love hate relationship with it because i i grew up in a town called sand creek in michigan and our high school was like you know a thousand kids there wasn't that many and there was no horror fans there was no punk rock fans there was really no horror fans and then scream came out and everybody liked horror and i was like fuck you i did this first you know i had that whole you know punk metal <laughs> feeling yeah. But I loved the movie at the same time. It's like, I hate what the movie's doing, but the, that movie for me was the fallout boy of, you know, movies. Like, 
this yes. band that was supposed to be mine that blew up and everybody loved that you know now scream is blowing up and everybody's gonna love horror and it's not gonna be a special you know little kid thinking you know yes. um not realizing the more popular this gets the more sequels we're gonna get the more slashers we're gonna get i know what you did last summer urban legend valentine these amazing movies that wouldn't exist if scream wouldn't have been successful now i could talk hours and hours about scream i really could but what would you say your favorite scene from scream is well, I, I would, but I'd say that Drew Barrymore scene. I yeah. mean, I think so. Either that or when it was revealed that there's two killers. Mm -hmm. That to me is, it, I was like, what? You know, so, um, I, yeah, I, I think I, I, the last time I saw it was um, just before, like the summer before, uh, I think it was summer of 2019, at Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Los Angeles, they do these nights where you can bring in food, you bring in drinks, you dress up as the characters, and you sit in the cemetery and you watch the movie. And it was so incredible because there's, I mean, male, female, everyone dressed up as Drew Barrymore, male, female, everyone dressed up as, as Ghostface, you know, and um, so I think you know, looking back at that iconic movie, I don't think there's a scene that I don't like. You know, I think it's honestly a masterpiece and it has proved to be that in over 20, the, over 20 years, almost 30 years that it's been around. So um, you can't really knock it. <laughs> For me, it's anything with Jamie Kennedy. Everybody's a suspect. Oh my God, um, Jamie Kennedy, <laughs> yeah, yes. See, and it's funny because, like I said, I grew up in a video store. My parents owned a video store. I was Jamie Kennedy. I was that guy that was always talking about horror movies and, like, trying to connect dots that were never there. Like, that was me, man. So, like, that, that was totally it. Um, yeah. So, and I think I know the answer to this next question because we've talked about it a couple times already. But, obviously, as horror fans, we love the kills. It's something that we love. We gravitate towards. And we've talked about it a couple times. I don't know if it's your favorite, but it's definitely the most iconic. What was your favorite kill in Scream? Oh my goodness. That is that is a really, really difficult, difficult uh, <laughs> question. I haven't seen it since 2019, but um, I, I think I think there was a kill towards the end that right before right before they're caught, uh, right before they reveal themselves. They have the one of um Tatum going in the garage door and get lifted yeah that um, was creepy as fuck that was wild too that's the thing is every single kill that they had was so creative and mm -hmm. so wild um you, you know it, it's it's honestly there's so many there's so many great uh, uh scenes and kills in that movie um i need a refresher I should have watched yeah. this again. Uh, you can't go of, wrong watching this. No, you can't go <laughs> wrong. I, I've just been getting ready to leave, you know. But um, right. you know, scream all all the all the screams, everything like that. To me, um, I, I I need a I need to go on a scream binge for a while. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's what I'll do that's after I'm done in the studio, and it can be my. Uh, my inspiration for a recording on this next album. I went on a Scream binge. Let's say that. <laughs> there you go. And you got to make sure that after you watch Scream 2022, you text me and let me know what you think. So I would love to have your opinion on it. I'm not going to spoil anything. I don't spoil anything. One, because you haven't seen it. And yeah. two, it hasn't yeah. been released on physical media yet. So I don't play that game. But I have a so lot to say about this movie. And you and I will have this conversation when that time comes. So yeah. um, today, Heidi, we did talk about your first horror movie being scream and how much that meant to you but now my buddy ghostface is here and he has a question for you Fuck yeah what's your favorite scary movie heidi <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie of all um, time i would say honestly the new edition of evil dead got me. that got me it was i love 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 the the newer evil dead the new one or the old one is fun and campy and i do love campy b you know horror films but they did such an amazing job with evil dead um i really loved it follows i thought that that was uh, they had such an incredible storyline um Detroit started, represent yeah exactly i started kind of diving into like the most fucked up kind of movies. I'd say anything from Eli Roth 
has uh, that I love, love, love. Um, last night I watched a movie that was really funny and it's not necessarily at all my favorite movie. Um, but antlers, it's a new one. It's on uh, HBO max. I love antlers. I, I, I thought it was really campy and, and silly in a way, but also creepy. There were a lot of jumpy parts. Um, I am a sucker for jumpy horror films, anything that can scare me and jump me, you know, uh, that is my, that's my go-to. So um, it, it, anytime that there's a new scary movie out or anything, um, I'm one of those that has like the AMC, you see three movies a week for 20 bucks a month <laughs> thing. I'm one of those that has that because I'll go, if I can, I'll go, if the, you know, now that if this if it's open, um, but I'll go and I want to see every horror film that comes out. Do you do you have a subscription to Shutter? You know I don't, and I need, you need to. to. Do that. Yeah, Heidi, I I'm telling you, you will never look back. It's my favorite thing. I'm on Shutter, you know, six days a week, getting new ideas for content to put out, and um, something you just said that I want to touch on. I think that Evil Dead 2013 is the best remake of all time. Uh, I, agree. I, I put that uh, I put that above the thing, even uh, John Carpenter's thing. But the thing about 2013 Evil Dead is it makes so much fucking sense. Um, yeah. It's not a bunch of kids going out to party in the woods like they're trying to get her off dope. You know, she's on heroin, man. They're trying to make her kick her dope habit. And uh, it's they, so they, real. that's why they can't leave. Yeah. And I and I, I think that that's probably. Yeah, I think you nailed it as to why I found that one of my favorite horror films, if not my absolute favorite horror film of all time, because it likened it to what children and young adults are going through. And like you said, 2013, even nowadays, I think that um, in a way it made itself a little bit timeless. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was a, I, I was in a movie um, called Animals. Uh, it was a horror film. It was actually named the worst horror film of all time, which I, I'm like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and they I obviously have never seen The Exorcist 2, but I digress. <laughs> I had a, I had a kill scene in it. And, and, um, and, and I remember, um, watching the, the new Evil Dead and kind of reminiscing on, um, you know, those days in filming Animal because it had a lot of kind of the same stuff involved in it. And um, yeah, I love, I love, love, love that movie. I'll tell you what I'm not a huge fan of. The It series. Not a big fan. Really? Yeah, I'm not. I don't know why. And maybe, I, I don't know if it's too fantasy for me. Like that could be it. And I know, I know why it is. Obviously it's, a, you know the book and it's back to the original but it's just it, it, it doesn't float my boat if you know what i mean mm -hmm. oh, wow. <laughs> um but it's fun it's fun. see for me i can put up with anything in a horror film and i can be pretty open-minded uh the only thing i can't do and anybody in this community knows that knows me uh the minute we get too much sexual assault i i just i can't do it yeah. and i can you know, I get there are people that have that, um, they live vicariously through that and they imagine get, you know, the rape revenge movies are pretty popular, but I, I got two daughters, you know, like that, you know, yeah. I've got a wife I've been with and you were talking about it follows. I have people ask me all the time, like, dude, if you could be in a horror movie that you know, you would survive, what would it be? It follows. I've been married for 17 years. I ain't fucking trust me. Yeah. I'm safe. Like, exactly. I'm, I'm straight. Exactly. It, it follows, please. Um, but the thing is like, if you get too much sexual assault in a movie, I just, I, I can't do it, man. Like, The Hills Have Eyes, uh, The Last House mm -hmm. on the Left, like, these movies, like, I was they, just gonna say that, yeah. Th th to me, that's not scary. Like, it, my skin gets hot, my chest starts hurting, I feel like I'm gonna puke, like, I'm yeah. out. I, that's where it's, I draw my line It's a at, little so. bit too disturbing, and I under, and I fully understand that, and I think that, um, it's, it's just a type of horror, because, um, depending on what the individual has been through in their real life that could be the absolute most terrifying thing that they can think of um i remember watching even green inferno <laughs> like it has a mix of almost everything in that one um but that's but you know when it comes to horror it is really it's kind of like music it's all really kind of self or like spirituality it, it it's all 
what you perceive in here. And everyone is going to have a different version of what horror is. Yes. And I think that that's why I love it so much. Um, mm -hmm. We just started watching the TV show uh, Yellow Jackets uh, on the very first episode. And I'm like, is this horror crime? Like, I can't figure it out yet. But I'm like watching cannibalism, murder, like all sorts of stuff. I'm like, okay, all right, I'm in. Have, <laughs> first episode. Have you, watched, have you watched Archive 81 yet? Yes, I wa I just finished that. Yeah. God, yeah, it was so good, wasn't it? It was so the thing about that is that it was so unique. Yes. Like, these these TV shows and movies that are coming out with unique storylines and stuff that is mind bending. I'm like, kudos. In 2022, yep. where it seems like everything's been done, they're adding these awesome twists and all these things. And another thing I'm really excited about is this new alien movie from Jordan. Uh, Jordan Peele. Oh, nope. Nope. Yes. I'm very Not excited about that. Of planet Earth. Oh my yeah. gosh. It's brilliant. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. Yeah. Um, so Heidi, I want to thank you so much for coming out and hanging out with me and spending some time with me, but we always end this with the same question. We're going to bounce back to scream. And what we're going to do now is rank scream on a skull count. Now okay. we're not going to be ranking it on acting, production, score, direction, Nothing like that. What we're doing, Heidi, is strictly judging this movie on how much it affected you. So zero skulls being not effective, five being very effective. What would your ranking of Scream 1996 be? Oh, five. Obviously. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's uh, it, it it ignited something in me that I've carried my entire life. So I would give that a five. <laughs> That's kind of perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so again I, I know we're at the third act now the credits are about to roll so before they do guys let's throw that one last twist in there the links are down here in the description i know i said it before but i'm gonna say it again make sure you're following her on social media so you can stay up to date on everything she's doing if you can make sure you contribute to the virginia bitches this is not a necessity it's not something you have to do but if you want to be involved and you want to help to get this film made that's a yeah, really good way to help them out awesome perks yes find and you awesome get rewarded for it absolutely yeah, yeah it's and, not just like uh, last, but not, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. last but not least make sure you are also following the band make sure you're checking them out showing them some love obviously they're getting ready to go record a new album here in the mitten so i can't wait to see how that turns out um don't go anywhere heidi i got a couple more questions for you everybody else as always keep talking horror stay what you are and we'll see you guys soon mm -hmm.